Hi everyone, it's Sarah. I hope you're having a good week so far. It's hard to believe it's almost Wednesday tomorrow. Um, I'm obviously here in the UK. It's a bit cold, a bit dark and a bit a bit chilly. But yeah, it's. Um, I hope you're having a good week so far. So in case you don't know what I do, just a little bit of background on me. I'm a coach, trainer and a speaker. And my specialist area is really helping individuals to find a career that they love. Now, that may well be stepping up into your current role and um, improving your current career situation in terms of what are the behaviours, attributes and skills you need to be able to progress your career or improve your career and relationships at work. Or it might be something completely new. It might be setting up your own business. It may be going freelancing. It may be contracting. There's so many different ways that we can design our careers today. It might be working at home. It may be having a portfolio career. Or perhaps um, I've worked with other people that want to explore creative skills like writing and bring those into their careers. So there's so many different ways we can slice and dice our careers today. As long as you decide, well, actually, if I'm not happy, I want to go from A to B um, with a little bit of a curve sometimes in between. But it's entirely possible. So that's what I do for individuals. And then obviously, for if you may seem from my website, for executives to uh, re revisit certain key points that I make. But last, last week was really, after having a bit of a break myself, was all about goals and setting goals. And there were lots of tips there about, you know, some people feel like, oh, new me, new year, whatever, or oh, goals, goals, goals. But actually, you know, this stuff does work. Writing down your goals and really setting your direction works otherwise what you can find is you're kind of living your life for somebody else or on somebody else's agenda now if you're married if you have children if you have parents for example you have to look after that's going to obviously reflect on the goals and what you can do with your time but we all have different demands that are competing different things we have to factor into our lives but that video last week was really about goals and goal setting now i'm taking it a little bit of a step further in terms of there's a phrase that I used on my post and I sometimes use in my communications and it's something that I'm really trying to articulate and push forward this year and that's what I what I call inside out leadership so for me leadership is all about setting direction walking the walk talking the talk being authentic there's so many different facets of leadership I think it's one of those words you can kind of Think for yourself about what makes a good leader. And this is actually about leadership in the broadest sense. Yes, it can be about leadership in the corporate environment, but it can also be about personal leadership. So for me, when I'm talking about inside leadership, I talk about it in a number of different contexts. And what I'm going to talk about tonight is the context of careers, because obviously this is my consumer offering. This is what I offer to individuals in terms of rebooting their career, whether that's a career change, redesigning how their career works. Is it self-employment? Is it a number of different um, avenues that people progress? Or is it, you know what, I've been made redundant, time to review everything. So this is really about the career self-leadership, I guess you could call it. And the way that I want to start this is some of you may have heard me say this before, but actually for me, when we set goals in certain areas of our life, they tend to have a knock-on effect in other areas of our life. So if we've got something that's really doing our head in and it's like, oh my goodness, I can't stop arguing with my partner or I'm not sleeping, I'm so stressed, then making an improvement to that critical area. And don't forget, I always say that health, sleep, nutrition are the foundation as well as a, a financial base. They're the foundations of the house. What we want to do is build on those foundations. So if there's something really affecting the foundation, we can't sort of build the, uh, what do I call it? We can't build the conservatory at the back or the loft conversion. So that's quite a useful metaphor, isn't it? You can tell I'm thinking about home decorations this year. That's one of my goals anyway. Um, but really, it's all about thinking, you know what? If we tackle the most critical um, destabilizing area of our life it will have a knock-on effect in other areas so for example if your career is like oh my god it's a real buzzkill and I want to do something different 
then taking steps towards that whilst it might take some time to identify what you want. And actually, that's the commonest problem that people say to me is like, I don't know what I want. And the thing is, if you keep saying, I don't know what I want, guess what? You won't know what you want. So sometimes it's about softening that language. But I'm going off on one of my tangents. So let's think about career. So for example, um, for me, um, and this is where the kind of inside out leadership really plays into things is that... What we do in our life, be that our relationship, our job, looking after our children, it's not something over there. Because if it's over there, we can like ignore it, ignore it, ignore it until it gets unbearable. And then we might pop, explode, get really stressed, um, create all sorts of havoc in other areas of our life, like argue with our partner a lot, as I mentioned before, things like that. So really, for me, the career is, you know, we are working so many you know so many more days weeks years than our parents used to and health permitting you know we want to be able to enjoy those careers so we may have like well same as marriage we may have more than one marriage but we may have more than one iteration of our career so for me it's about an extension of who we are that is if you're someone who really wants to live a life on purpose and really think about is this something that I'm enjoying now enjoying can mean different things to different people it may be that if you are someone that is very entrepreneurial very independent the idea of you working for another company bring bring, you know you break out in hives basically however for some of us it may well be do you know what I am happy in this job because I have the balance and that balance is really important to me because I have elderly parents I need to look after or I've got children I need to look after or I've got a hobby or a social interest that I'm really passionate in it could be you know I really want to work for this I don't know not-for-profit organization because it's something I feel really passionate about so we all have different values that are important to our career and actually I'm going to write that down do a post or a video on career values and why they're important to us about what we really treasure in our career and that can change by the way as our life changes so our career I feel is not something over there it's like our problems they're not outside of there it's not like yeah that's somebody else that's nothing to do with me very often we can be the cause of our own career discomfort some of our own problems so let's think about you know when we are moaning about our jobs a lot very often it's like you know what that person really does my head in or my boss is really doing my head in and what we're doing there is like we're taking that magnifying glass and shining it on a bit of paper to the paper like sets on fire or something and really what we want to do is turn the view around and go hang on a minute let's look at myself in the mirror because if I don't change then nothing else is going to change and that is just absolutely true because we need to be able to um Sorry, that just somebody just phoned me. Um, I hope it wasn't uh, Brad Pitt. He's getting a bit annoying these days, actually. But anyway, we need to really look at not shining the light on other people. Yes, there may be people in our life that frankly do our head in, and we may need to question: Can I really deal with this person? That is still a decision. That's still a self-directed decision. So let's look in the mirror and let's be honest and go: Okay, right. Do you know what? I think I'm a really cool person and I think I really deserve to have the career that I want at this point in time in my in my life. What's not working? What do I need to change in my career? And let's stop jabbing the finger at other people because guess what? When we jab the finger at other people, it's far too easy to let ourselves off the hook and say, well, you know, I don't need to do anything because I'm unhappy because of that person. But guess what? It won't just be that person. It'll be somebody else and somebody else. And you'll find that your results won't change in your life because you're not thinking about what's important to you and maybe what you need to evolve in your own life. So what I'm saying with inside out leadership is that sometimes when you look at your external environment, your external career, and I'm not saying all the time, I'm not saying that if you're in a bullying, stressful situation, that is all your fault. It's not about apportioning blame at all. It is not being hard on ourselves, but it's maybe if we are in that situation, looking in the mirror and going, do you know what? I actually deserve better and I want to change this. I want to change this situation. So it's about being kind to ourselves, but actually looking that sometimes what's in our life, particularly in our career, can be the sum of our attitudes, how we show up, our beliefs and our actions. And sometimes if you look at the various decisions... If I look back at my own career, 
I feel quite blessed actually that I've always been quite I've been very purposeful in fact about my career and gone yep 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 yeah I've always been very true to myself and I can see that there's a direct um, correlation between other things I want in my life and how I recalibrated and rebooted my career so for example many years ago I took the decision to go freelance because I wanted to have a bit more flexibility and work-life balance the idea of being status driven traveling the world that was no longer important to me so we changed so it's it's very good to be able to look back and go, oh, what led to that decision? And why am I feeling a bit of discomfort now? What's the next decision that I perhaps need to make? And we are the sum of our attitudes, our beliefs and our actions. So, for example, if you tell yourself, um, do you know what? A bit too old to change jobs. I'm never going to get another job. Uh, I don't think I'm very smart. Well, at, what happens is that our thoughts translate into our feelings and they translate into our behaviours. And I don't know if you know, but scientists are finding that we have thinking cells, thinking cells, not just in our brain, but in our heart and in every cell in our body. So basically, you're like dousing yourself with lots of negative energy. And that really comes across. I don't know if you've ever met someone who's like... Uh, very negative, very down. Don't get me wrong, we all have our off days, but someone that's consistently, you know, what I call a sink, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, you feel like you've trod into like quicksand or something. So if that's what you believe about yourself, that's how you're going to come across to other people. And it's just, again, somewhat a bit of an excuse to not take action and to deny yourself this this concept of inside out leadership of leading with the front foot and really looking at yourself in the mirror about what you want rather than pointing fingers at others. Now, <coughs> not everyone's on the same page. Um, we're all, um, I hate to use a J word, but I'm going to do it. Uh, we're on the same, we're all on a different journey. Um, some of us aren't quite as self aware. Some of us may have had something in our life that's happened to us, um, I don't know, divorce redundancy, that's really sharpened our focus and thought, hang on, I need to change what I'm doing. We're all on a different part of our journey, you know, and you, you are where you are. So none of this is about blaming yourself. It's just about recognising where you are and recognising that actually change starts with you, that actually leading change, you are your own leader in your life. It may not feel like that sometimes, but you really are. Don't like your job, you can leave and find another one. Having an issue with somebody at work, you can sort of manage the time you spend around them, manage the conversations or talk to them about it. Uh, wanting a promotion, you can start to think about how do I get that promotion? What are the skills I need to acquire? So do you see what I mean? It's all about taking forward action rather than sort of sitting there and thinking negatively about everything. So this is really about believing in yourself and being true to yourself and thinking, well, if I'm a little bit dis uncomfortable, discomfortable, that's not a word, uncomfortable in my career, how am I going to feel in a year's time if I'm still here in the same situation? So really fast forward and look back on, on yourself now and think, oh, you know, how am I going to feel? Be true to yourself, but be kind to yourself as well. And don't let other people drag you down. Um, imagine yourself to be kind of like a lighthouse and your light can shine on other people. Um, other people, as I said just, just a moment ago, are on a different path, a different journey. Some people are just not ever going to be aware of how their um, negative attitudes and beliefs will hold them back from leading their own life, from being their own leader from the inside out. They're on their own journey, but don't let them stop yours and don't let them drag you down. There are many people who, I was coaching somebody this week and he said, well, you know, I had this thing with my job and I've made a decision about finding a new role and a close relative said to me, what, you're going to get another job? And it really sort of resonated to what he was told as a child. And that may well have been said with somebody's own limited perception of what it takes to get a job these days. But try and protect yourself from other people's negative energy. Don't let them stop your energy, block your energy or take it away. It's only taken away if you allow it to be taken away. So just kind of stand still, calm and don't buy into what other people may be saying that could be a bit on the negative side. So science is proving all of what I'm talking about now and has been for a very, very, very long time. And a lot of the techniques I talk about, they actually rewire our brains. So if you start thinking in this mindset of I'm going to have an open mindset, I'm going to be flexible. I'm going to really start to explore the different options that I've got because we've never had so many 
opportunities to lead our career from the foot forward. I know it's very difficult. I know there's always like sort of ups and downs in politics. But I mean, if you look at other countries in the world, we are so lucky, particularly if we're in Europe, the US, in certain developed countries, we are so lucky to have the opportunities that we have now and that our parents and grandparents didn't have. So what a shame to waste all the hard work that other people have put in um, and deny ourselves those opportunities to lead ourselves rather than waiting other peop- waiting for other people to lead our lives. So science is proving that thoughts are like magnets. So if I think a negative thought, I'm going to have a magnet going, ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. before you know it, my hard drive up here is going to be full of negative beliefs. And that's going to translate to my feelings. And that's going to translate to my actions and my energy and the impact that I have on other people. So if you're going through a promotion and you're going through all these limiting self-doubts, then you probably are not going to get that promotion because you need to really reboot about actually, you know what, there's stuff I need to do at work, there's conversations I need to have about my career, there's conversations I need to have with my banker or my accountant about setting up my business, but I am, I'm in charge of this, this is my show, this is my life and I'm going to live it. So, remember as well, something that I referred to I think last year in quite a few of my videos that when it comes to these negative beliefs that stop us being our own self-leaders, stop us leading from the inside out, here, 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 every part of our body, that our minds cannot distinguish between a negative and a positive thought. So if you have that fleeting feeling of, "Mm, I'm not good enough to get that promotion, your brain goes, yeah, okay, right, yeah, cool. And so why not feed it with positive things and allow the brain to seep in the positive things? So really think about, what you're saying to yourself and if you notice this negativity seeping in what can you do to shift that energy what kind words can you say to yourself to elevate your your energy and ultimately your results in life and i know for a fact that since i've started i started in my um started doing this kind of work in my mid 20s late 20s which was obviously about 2 years ago <laughs> not really um you know since i, I you know, that's not to say I haven't had challenges, but I have very much, I've always wanted to be in my own boss, you know, in charge of my own life, whether that be relationships, my friends, my family, and it has worked out like that, because I made myself that promise when I was younger, and, um, you know, I, I can tell you that I know which way I would rather live, when I'm, when I've had times where I felt really negative, really low, and the whole world's against me, guess what, the whole world's against me, when I've gently shifted that energy and thought, no, I'm not going to be a victim, I'm going to move forward, the, my results have got better and better and better. And it's it's a bit it's a bit like going to the gym, we need to exercise those spiritual, I did said the S word, sorry, spiritual or neurological, psychological muscles, pick whichever word you like. Anyway, so as I mentioned, these thoughts can manifest, manifest themselves as um, feelings and actions and ultimately impact the results that you have. So let's think about goals, self-leadership goals. Okay, so why do we need goals? If you don't like the word goals, as I said last week, there's loads of tips about how to set goals, um, a more general video, but if you want to really lead from the inside about what you want, then you have to think about the fact that, well, I don't really want to be the passenger on somebody else's journey. And it's the old chestnut about, you know, you get to the top of the ladder and realise it's against the wrong wall. I think it's Brian Tracy, who's a fantastic coach, author, speaker, who said that. And it's it's really like fantastic quote to go, hang on, is this really what I want? This is what I talk about inside out leadership. Make your goals realistic. So make them realistic to you. Make them your goals as much as you can. I know at work that we have um, goals that we get given, but you know, think about well, hang on a minute, that work goal. How does that achieve ladder up to my um career goals and my other aspirations? It could be right if I achieve that level at work and achieve that goal in my career, that goal career goal that's been given to me. How does that help me in other areas of my life? So realistic, achievable. I'd suggest ethical, motivating, not somebody else's goal. So it's just like if your dad says you've got to paint the house, it's like. Mm, how can you make that your goal or if you don't want to do it you know it's not really your goal but what I will say is as much as I'm using the g word quite a lot um this is about enjoying life isn't it life isn't a business project so yes inside out leadership thoughts feelings actions looking in the mirror being honest with yourself being kind with yourself changing what you say to yourself changing how you deal with negative people listening to that negative self-talk and changing it into positive but 
this life is all about enjoying yourself and you know what i'd hate is for anyone to be stressed running around setting goals left right and center because believe you me i've coached many people that have way 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 too many goals and guess what you know it stops it can stop us enjoying life so make sure those goals are realistic and you're still able to have some downtime and relax and and just do nothing sometimes there's nothing wrong with that uh, in fact, that might even be a goal, <laughs> you know, if you could turn it into the positive as in, you know, give myself more time to relax and hey, why not? So there's no point doing all this if you're going to be even more stressed and running around, unless you can deal with that stress. Um, so yeah, as I said, they are, um, make sure they're achievable, motivating, self-directed, yours, not somebody else's goals and they're things what you enjoy. And I suggest writing them down because psychologically when you write things down, it accesses a different part of your brain, which is all to do with motivation and the achievement of goals. So there you go. That makes total sense. You can do it on your iPhone, but I quite like writing things in a little journal. I have a little book that I carry around with me, a little notebook. And I guess, as I mentioned before, think about your life in this uh, complex phrase that I'm about to use. Which bit of your life sucks the most? Maybe start with that bit because... If you start with a bit that sucks the most, you may find that just by taking baby steps, you're able to make incremental gains that will have a knock-on effect in other areas of your life. And really think about how much do I want this change from one being like, mm, not really, I'm just saying it so it looks good, to 10, like I really want it. Score those different goals, but which one, you know, just pick one area to start with. And just give yourself the confidence that you can do this stuff. You can really feel that shift in energy, your results, your own self-leadership. And yeah, just pick which bit sucks the most. Um, so another thing as well that I've just noticed just through coaching a few people recently, and I've caught myself saying it, is saying, oh, I haven't got the time. So let's change that word about I don't have time. Because we all have time. Unfortunately, time is finite. We can't get back, you know, what we did even a few seconds ago. Time is the present. That's all we know. And I would say shift that wording. Make time. I want to make time for this. And just see if that feels better. As in, oh, I want to do that. I'm quite busy. But I, I want to make time. Not just say, oh, I should really have the time to do that. You know, really sort of think about, I'm going to say, make time. I'm going to make time to spend an hour studying this online course or whatever it is you want to do. The other thing that I found really useful is sometimes when we're saying, oh, I haven't got time. Um, and we want to move that making time. If you add up the number of hours there are in a week and sort of write down the different areas like sleeping, getting ready, eating, shopping, doing emails, working, commuting, seeing friends. Have a look at, you know, if you calculate how many hours there are in a seven day week and then bucket out how many hours you're spending in each of those areas. Now, I've had times where I've been like a goal achieving machine and I've just been going dig, 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 and I thought, hang on a minute, this is too much. So I've actually sat down and done this exercise and I thought, you know what, I have got enough time. So where am I wasting this time? I need to stop watching repeats of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares on Channel 4, you know, because that's where my time's going. So, um, which I have done in the past, I will confess. So make a tally of the times and, and think about that phrase, I'm going to make time, I'm going to make time, rather than have time, don't have time. Um, so what else have I got here? I made a few notes. Yes, are there goals that overlap? I've talked about this before, knock on effect. Right, so if you want to have a more, if you want to start up a new business, I want to start up a new business, but you know what, I really like writing. Is there a way that you combine that? So you practice your writing through starting a new business in blogs or freelance writing, um, or do you know what, I really, um, I really need to go out networking to find my next job or uh, kick, kick start my business. Um, yeah, I need to get better at social media as well. So you can do offline networking, but you can do online working. So there you get to practice those social media skills you might want to on LinkedIn, but also you are networking with people in the social environment. Um, so like on social networks, and those can lead to offline uh, relationships as well. Um, break things down into tangible steps. I think I've said that many times before. And 
you know, if you get to a point where you're struggling and you're like, oh my God, there's just so much going on, then pull out your kind of dream list, your bucket list, your goal list, whatever you want to do, and really check in with yourself and go, hang on a minute, is that still a priority? Are they still as important as they were? Do I need to rejig things? Are there two areas that have an interdependency that I can work on? If I work on one, it's going to have a knock-on effect. And um, yeah, it's all about kind of holding ourselves accountable. And that's the beauty of coaching is that, and that's not to be punitive, but the beauty of coaching is that you do have someone who's like your cheerleader from the sidelines, somebody that will reflect back. So I was having a conversation with somebody the other night and he's going through um, some redundancy at the moment and he's kind of on gardening leave. Now he has had a career ambition that I've known about for a long time. And I said, well, what are you doing at the moment? Nothing. Well, why don't you start this course now? And it's like, oh God, yeah. You know, sometimes we can't see the wood for the trees because we're too close to what's in front of us. So yeah, just stay in control with it. Reaffirm those lists, you know, reaffirm the priorities. So yeah, so this is a, a bit about inside out leadership, you know, setting goals. And I've talked about careers a lot this evening, but um, sort of saying that your inside out leadership is about self leadership, that your, your results are very often not something over there, like your career, it's something that's part of you. Um, keep reaffirming your goals, enjoy them, make them realistic, make them motivating, score them, not out of 10, one, I'm sorry, one out of 10, 10 out of 10, where am I, where do I want to be, write them all down, prioritise them, which bit is the one that's like doing your head in the most, maybe start there, will that have a knock on effect into another segment of your life, remember that we need to catch those negative thoughts because they turn into behaviours and they turn into action and they turn into energy. And our mind has no idea whether the tr what we say to ourselves that's negative or positive is the truth. So our mind thinks both are the truth. So guess what? I'm going to feed myself with positive thoughts. And if I'm doing that just 1% better, then we can keep moving and moving and make that even more positive. So... Um, I think that was everything I wanted to talk about, apart from this should, oh, should, I use a should word, about making time rather than having time, uh, softening that phraseology and enjoying what you're doing, adding up how many hours you spend on things during the week to get a really clear snapshot, writing down your goals and, you know, taking baby steps, break them down and enjoy it. You know, this is all supposed to be like about enjoying life. We're so lucky um, many of us are so lucky to have what we have and to have sort of overcome challenges that we've had in our life. And I think we can't, sometimes need to honour those challenges and honour how hard we've all worked to get where we are today. So there you go. A bit about inside out leadership, a bit about setting goals and how that relates to careers and other areas. Um, thank you to those that are watching. This is going to be obviously posted on my Facebook page. And, you know, if there's future topics you'd like me to talk about, just uh, drop a note in the comments or um, send me a direct message. You can connect with me, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as well and LinkedIn where you can see much more about, yes, my career coaching, but actually my services for organisations such as team coaching, executive development, taking the jump from manager to leader, conflict management, all of that good fun stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, been great being here this evening. If you're in the UK, I hope you've got the central heating on because it's freezing, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, have a great evening and um, any questions, any comments, any thoughts, anything you want to chat about in confidence, yeah, by all means, get in touch for set up a call and um, have a great rest of the day, evening. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.